The dinner party was supposed to be a joyous occasion, a chance for our families to come together and celebrate Haley's engagement to Ethan. But from the moment Helen Belmont walked through the door, her perfectly coiffed hair and designer dress exuding an aura of arrogance, I knew we were in for a long night. "'Thank you for inviting us into your humble abode,' Helen said, her eyes scanning my modest living room with thinly veiled disdain. I forced a smile, determined not to let her get under my skin. It's not much, but it's home. Haley shot me an apologetic look, her hand squeezing Ethan's as if seeking reassurance. His mother's behavior was already making her uncomfortable, and we hadn't even made it to the dining room yet. As we gathered around the table, the tension in the air was palpable. Helen's gaze lingered on the mismatched plates and silverware, her perfectly painted lips pursed in disapproval. People like you will never understand real elegance, she said, her eyes glinting with malicious delight. I gritted my teeth, trying to hold back the tears that threatened to spill. Is that so? I responded coolly, locking eyes with Helen. Haley's face turned pale, suddenly silent. Ethan cleared his throat, his hand resting on my daughter's arm in a gesture that was meant to be reassuring, but felt more like a warning. Now, mother, let's not ruin the evening with petty comments. But Helen was just getting started. My dear, I'm simply trying to prepare you for the world you're marrying into. The Belmonts have certain standards. Madison, her daughter, nodded in agreement, her perfectly highlighted hair bobbing as she spoke. It's going to be quite an adjustment for you, Haley. Our social circle expects a certain level of sophistication. I wanted to lash out to defend my daughter and our way of life, but I knew it would only give them more ammunition. So I bit my tongue and focused on the food, serving each plate with a forced smile. As the evening wore on, the insults continued to flow, each one more cutting than the last. But through it all, I remained calm, determined not to let them see how deeply their words stung. Finally, as the last crumbs of dessert were cleared away, Helen rose from her seat, her perfectly manicured nails tapping against the table. Well, this has been enlightening she said, her gaze sweeping over us with a look of utter disdain. We'll be in touch about the wedding plans. And with that, she swept out of the room, Madison trailing behind her like a loyal puppy. As the door slammed shut behind them, I let out a shaky breath, my hands trembling slightly. Haley's eyes were filled with tears, and Ethan looked deeply uncomfortable. I'm so sorry, he murmured, his hand resting on my daughter's shoulder. They can be difficult. But as I looked into his eyes, I saw something there that made me pause, a flicker of something that didn't quite match the apologetic tone of his voice. In that moment, I knew that this was just the beginning of a long and difficult journey. The Belmonts had drawn their battle lines, and I had no choice but to fight back. After that disastrous dinner party, I knew I had to steel myself for the challenges ahead. The Belmonts had made their disdain for me and my lifestyle abundantly clear, and I couldn't help but worry about how their toxic attitudes might affect Haley and her relationship with Ethan. As I lay awake that night, my mind drifted back to the early years, when it was just Haley and me against the world. After my divorce, I was left with nothing but a broken heart and a fierce determination to give my daughter the best life possible. I took any job I could find, working long hours as a waitress, a cashier, a receptionist, anything to make ends meet. There were days when I barely had enough energy to keep my eyes open, but the sight of Haley's smiling face was all the motivation I needed to keep pushing forward. Slowly but surely, I started to piece my life back together. I took night classes, studied hard, and eventually landed a decent office job. It wasn't glamorous, but it provided a steady paycheck and health insurance, and that was enough for me. As Haley grew older, I made sure she never felt the sting of our financial struggles. I scrimped and saved, working overtime whenever possible, so that she could have the things I never had as a child, dance lessons, summer camps, and the occasional family vacation. Through it all, Haley was my rock, my constant source of joy and inspiration. She never complained about our modest lifestyle, never asked for more than I could give. She was the kind of daughter any mother would be proud of. And then, just when I thought I had finally found my footing, Ethan Belmont came into our lives. At first, he seemed like a dream come true, 
charming, successful, and head over heels in love with my daughter. I'll never forget the way Haley's eyes lit up when she introduced us, or the genuine warmth in Ethan's smile as he shook my hand. But as the months went by and I got to know the Belmonts better, I started to see the cracks in their perfect facade. The snide comments, the condescending looks, the not-so-subtle hints that we weren't good enough for their precious son. And yet, through it all, Ethan remained silent, never once standing up for us or defending our way of life. It was as if he had already chosen sides, and we were the ones left out in the cold. As I watched Haley's excitement over the wedding plans turn to anxiety and doubt, I knew I had to do something. I couldn't just sit back and let the Belmonts tear my family apart with their toxic attitudes and outdated prejudices. So I started to do some digging, reaching out to old friends and acquaintances, anyone who might have information on the Belmonts' true nature. And what I uncovered was a tangled web of lies, deceit, and carefully hidden secrets. It seemed that the Belmonts' wealth wasn't quite as pristine as they liked to pretend. There were whispers of shady business deals, infidelities, and even a few skeletons in the closet that they had worked hard to keep buried. As I pieced together the puzzle, a plan started to form in my mind. If the Belmonts wanted to play dirty, then so be it. I was prepared to fight fire with fire, to expose their true colors and protect my daughter from their toxic influence, no matter what it took. Despite my reservations about the Belmonts, I tried to keep an open mind when Haley first introduced me to Ethan. He seemed like a charming, well-mannered young man, and the way his face lit up when he looked at my daughter filled me with hope. "'It's so nice to finally meet you, Mrs. Shaw,' he said, reaching out to shake my hand with a firm grip. "'Haley has told me so much about you. I couldn't help but notice the way his gaze swept over our modest living room— taking in the worn but well-loved furniture and the hodgepodge of family photos lining the walls. But to his credit, he didn't let his expression falter. "'Please call me Morgan,' I replied, offering him a warm smile. "'And welcome to our home. It's not much, but it's ours.' Haley beamed at us, her eyes shining with happiness. "'Isn't he just the best?' she gushed, linking her arm through Ethan's. "'I'm so lucky to have found him.' As we settled in for a casual dinner, Ethan regaled us with stories of his job at a prestigious law firm, his plans for the future, and his love of travel. He was engaging and articulate, and I found myself slowly warming up to him, despite my initial reservations. But then, as the conversation turned to my own career and background, I noticed a slight shift in his demeanor. His eyes narrowed ever so slightly, and his smile seemed to lose a bit of its warmth. A single mother running an online boutique, he mused, taking a sip of his wine. That must have been quite a challenge. I bristled at the implied condescension in his tone, but before I could respond, Haley jumped in. Mom worked her butt off to give me the best life possible, she said, her voice tinged with pride. She's the strongest, most resilient person I know. Ethan's smile returned, but there was something off about it, a hint of tension around his eyes, a slight tightening of his jaw. Of course, he said smoothly. I didn't mean any disrespect. It's just, well, my family comes from a different background, shall we say. I felt a prickle of unease at his words, but I pushed it aside, determined not to let my doubts ruin the evening. After all, this was supposed to be a joyous occasion, a chance for us to celebrate Haley's happiness and look forward to the future. As the night wore on, however, I couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't quite right. Ethan's behavior was impeccable, his manners flawless, but there was an undercurrent of something else. A sense of superiority, perhaps, or a subtle disdain for our way of life. It wasn't until he and Haley had left, and I was alone in the quiet of my living room, that the full weight of my concern hit me. I couldn't put my finger on it, but something about Ethan didn't sit right with me. And if my instincts were correct— if there was even a hint of the same toxic attitudes that plagued the Belmonts lurking beneath his polished exterior, then I knew I had to be prepared to fight for my daughter's happiness, no matter what it took. A few weeks after our initial meeting with Ethan, Haley excitedly announced that his parents wanted to host a formal family gathering at their home. I could tell she was thrilled at the prospect of being welcomed into their world, but a knot of dread formed in the pit of my stomach. Are you sure this is a good idea? 
I asked hesitantly. After the way your future mother-in-law treated us at the dinner party. Haley waved her hand dismissively. That was just a misunderstanding. I'm sure once they get to know you better, they'll see how amazing you are. I forced a smile, not wanting to dampen her enthusiasm. But as we pulled up to the Belmont's sprawling estate, my doubts only grew stronger. The house was massive, with perfectly manicured lawns and a circular driveway lined with expensive cars. I couldn't help but feel out of place in my modest sedan, my simple sundress a stark contrast to the opulence that surrounded us. Helen greeted us at the door, her perfectly coiffed hair and designer dress making me feel even more underdressed. "'Welcome, welcome,' she said, her tone dripping with false warmth. "'So wonderful to have you here.' As we stepped inside, I was immediately struck by the grandeur of the place, gleaming marble floors, soaring ceilings, and artwork that likely cost more than my entire net worth adorned the walls. "'Impressive, isn't it?' Madison Ethan's sister appeared at my elbow, her perfectly painted lips curved into a smirk. "'I'm sure it's quite different from what you're used to.' I bristled at her condescending tone, but before I could respond, Ethan swooped in, placing a protective arm around Haley's waist. "'Mother Madison, please,' he chided gently. "'We're all family here.' But the look in his eyes told a different story. There was a flicker of something there, a hint of the same disdain that his mother and sister so openly displayed. As the evening wore on, the insults and backhanded comments continued, each one more cutting than the last. Helen and Madison seemed to take great delight in pointing out the flaws in my appearance, my manners, and my modest background. Honestly, Haley, how do you expect to fit in with our social circle? Helen asked, her voice dripping with disdain. Your mother's lifestyle is hardly conducive to the kind of events we attend. Haley's face flushed, and I could see the tears shining in her eyes. But before she could respond, Ethan spoke up, his tone surprisingly sharp. That's enough, mother. Haley and Morgan are part of this family now, and you will treat them with respect. For a moment, I felt a glimmer of hope. Perhaps Ethan truly did care for my daughter, and was willing to stand up to his family's toxic attitudes but then I caught the look in his eyes, a flash of calculation, a hint of something darker lurking beneath the surface. And in that moment, I knew that his defense of us was nothing more than a carefully crafted act designed to maintain the illusion of unity for Haley's sake. As we left the Belmont estate that night, I couldn't shake the feeling that we had just witnessed the calm before the storm. The battle lines had been drawn, and I knew that the war for my daughter's happiness was only just beginning. After that disastrous evening at the Belmont's estate, I knew I couldn't sit idly by and let them continue to belittle and disrespect my family. If they wanted to play dirty, then so be it. I was prepared to fight fire with fire. I started by reaching out to some old acquaintances, people who had once been part of the Belmont's social circle but had since fallen out of favor. It didn't take long for the stories to start pouring in. Tales of infidelity, financial misdeeds, and a carefully cultivated facade of wealth and respectability that hid a rotten core. One former friend of Helen's, a woman named Claire, was particularly forthcoming. That family is nothing but a bunch of snakes, she hissed over coffee one afternoon. They'll do whatever it takes to maintain their status, even if it means stepping on the little people. Claire went on to describe how the Belmonts had used their wealth and influence to cover up scandals and sweep unsavory incidents under the rug. Apparently, Ethan's father had been involved in some shady business dealings, while Helen herself had been caught in a compromising position with her tennis instructor a few years back. As for Madison, the stories painted a picture of a spoiled, entitled young woman with a penchant for drugs and partying. It seemed the Belmont's pristine image was nothing more than a carefully constructed illusion designed to keep the world from seeing the ugly truth. Armed with this newfound knowledge, I started to formulate a plan. If the Belmonts thought they could bully and intimidate me into submission, they had another thing coming. I was going to expose their secrets, one by one, until they had no choice but to back down and leave my family alone. The first step was to plant seeds of doubt in Ethan's mind. 
During one of our weekly Sunday brunches, I casually mentioned how difficult it must be for him to maintain his high-powered job while also dealing with the stress of his family's drama. Drama, he asked, his brow furrowing. What do you mean? I shrugged, feigning nonchalance. Oh, you know, just the usual rumors that seem to swirl around wealthy families like yours. Infidelity, financial troubles, that sort of thing. Ethan's jaw tightened, and I could see the wheels turning in his mind. I don't know what you've heard, but my family is above reproach, he said stiffly. We have nothing to hide. But the seed had been planted, and in the weeks that followed, I made sure to water it regularly with carefully timed comments and insinuations. I could see the doubt growing in Ethan's eyes, the cracks beginning to form in his unwavering loyalty to his family. Next, I turned my attention to the wider social circle, reaching out to influential members of the community and discreetly sharing the information I had gathered. Before long, whispers and rumors began to circulate, casting doubt on the Belmont's carefully cultivated image. Helen and Madison, used to being the center of attention at every social gathering, suddenly found themselves on the receiving end of sidelong glances and hushed conversations. The once fawning crowds had turned against them, and they had no idea why. As for me, I maintained a carefully crafted air of innocence, feigning ignorance whenever Ethan or his family confronted me about the rumors. But deep down, I reveled in their growing discomfort, knowing that my plan was working perfectly. With each passing day, the Belmont's grip on their social standing grew weaker, and my resolve to protect my family grew stronger. They had underestimated me, thinking that a single mother from a modest background could never stand up to their wealth and influence. But they were wrong. I was a force to be reckoned with, and I wasn't going to stop until I had taken them down once and for all. As the wedding preparations kicked into high gear, the tension between me and the Belmonts only seemed to intensify. Helen and Madison were determined to plan the most extravagant, over-the-top affair imaginable, and they dismissed my suggestions for a more modest celebration with a wave of their perfectly manicured hands. Darling, you simply don't understand the expectations of our social circle, Helen would say, her voice dripping with condescension. A wedding like this is about more than just the happy couple. It's a statement, a reflection of our family's status and wealth. I bit my tongue, knowing that any argument would only fall on deaf ears. But Haley caught in the middle of this tug of war, was starting to show signs of strain. Mom, I just want a simple, beautiful wedding, she confided in me one evening, her eyes rimmed with exhaustion. But every time I try to voice my opinion, Helen and Madison shoot me down. I pulled her into a tight hug, my heart aching for her. Don't let them bully you, sweetheart. This is supposed to be your, your special day, not a showcase for their egos. But as the weeks wore on, it became increasingly clear that the Belmonts had no intention of listening to reason. They steamrolled over Haley's wishes, booking an opulent venue, hiring an exorbitantly priced florist, and insisting on a guest list that rivaled the population of a small town. Ethan, for his part, seemed to be caught in the middle, wavering between his loyalty to his family and his love for Haley. I could see the strain on his face whenever the wedding planning came up, and I couldn't help but wonder if the seeds of doubt I had planted were starting to take root. In a desperate attempt to regain some control over the situation, I reached out to an unexpected ally, Mrs. Hawkins, the Belmont's former housekeeper. She had been unceremoniously dismissed a few years back after catching Helen in a compromising position with her tennis instructor, and she harbored a deep resentment towards the family. Those people are nothing but a bunch of snakes, she spat when I met with her. They'll stop at nothing to get what they want, even if it means stepping on the little people. Mrs. Hawkins went on to share a wealth of information about the Belmont's dirty secrets, from financial misdeeds to hidden addictions and infidelities. It was like opening a Pandora's box of scandal and deception, and I knew that this was the ammunition I needed to finally bring them down. With Mrs. Hawkins' help, I started to subtly plant seeds of doubt and mistrust within the Belmont family itself. A carefully timed comment here. A whispered rumor there. Slowly but surely, the cracks in their facade began to show. Ethan, already struggling with his own doubts, 
grew increasingly distant and withdrawn. I could see the conflict in his eyes whenever he looked at Haley, torn between his love for her and the toxic influence of his family. And as for Helen and Madison, their once unshakable confidence began to falter. Whispers and sidelong glances followed them wherever they went, and they became increasingly paranoid and defensive, lashing out at anyone who dared question their authority. It was a slow burn, a carefully orchestrated campaign of psychological warfare designed to chip away at their power and influence bit by bit. And as the wedding day drew closer, I could feel the momentum building, the pieces falling into place for the ultimate showdown. The Belmonts had no idea what was coming, but they were about to learn a valuable lesson. Never underestimate a mother's love and determination to protect her family. The morning of the wedding dawned bright and clear but the tension in the air was thick enough to cut with a knife. As I helped Haley into her stunning white gown, I could see the strain on her face, the worry lines etched deep around her eyes. "'Are you sure about this, sweetheart?' I asked gently, smoothing the fabric over her shoulders. "'It's not too late to call the whole thing off.' Haley forced a smile, but it didn't quite reach her eyes. "'I love Ethan, Mom, and I want to believe that he loves me, too, despite everything with his family.' I nodded, biting back the doubts that threatened to spill out. We had come too far, sacrificed too much, to back down now. It was time to see this through to the bitter end. As we arrived at the opulent venue, the whispers and sidelong glances began almost immediately. Helen and Madison swept in like queens holding court, their perfectly coiffed hair and designer gowns a stark contrast to the understated elegance of Haley's dress. Well, well, if it isn't the blushing bride, Madison sneered, her gaze raking over Haley with thinly veiled disdain. Let's hope you don't embarrass us too much today. Haley's cheeks flushed, but before she could respond, Ethan appeared, his face a mask of tension. That's enough, Madison, he snapped, his tone sharper than I'd ever heard it. This is supposed to be a happy day. But as the ceremony began and the vows were exchanged, it became increasingly clear that something was amiss. Ethan's eyes kept darting towards the back of the room, his brow furrowed in confusion. And when I followed his gaze, I saw Mrs. Hawkins standing there, her face set in a grim line. As the officiant asked if anyone had any objections, Mrs. Hawkins stepped forward, her voice ringing out clear and strong. I do. A collective gasp rippled through the crowd, and Helen's face turned an alarming shade of red. How dare you interrupt this sacred ceremony? She hissed her perfectly manicured nails digging into Ethan's arm. But Mrs. Hawkins was undeterred. I have something to say, and I think it's only fair that everyone here knows the truth about the Belmont family. And then, one by one, she began to lay out the secrets she had shared with me, the financial misdeeds, the infidelities, the carefully cultivated facade of wealth and respectability that hid a rotten core. As each revelation landed like a bombshell, the room erupted into chaos. Guests gasped and whispered, their eyes darting between Mrs. Hawkins and the Belmonts, who stood frozen in horror. "'You lying witch!' Madison screeched, her perfectly coiffed hair falling into disarray as she lunged towards Mrs. Hawkins. But Ethan caught her arm, his face a mask of shock and betrayal. "'Is it true?' he demanded, his voice cracking with emotion. "'Have you been lying to me all this time?' Helen's composure finally cracked, and she dissolved into a puddle of tears and recriminations. It was all for you, darling, she sobbed. Everything we did was to secure your future, to give you the life you deserve. But Ethan wasn't having it. With a look of pure disgust, he turned to Haley, his eyes pleading for understanding. I'm so sorry, he whispered. I never meant for any of this to happen. And then, in a moment that seemed to stretch on forever— Haley's face hardened, and she ripped the veil from her head, tossing it aside with a defiant gesture. "'I'm done,' she declared, her voice ringing out loud and clear. "'I'm done with the lies, the manipulation, the toxic games. This wedding is off!' As the chaos swirled around us, I couldn't help but feel a sense of vindication, of justice finally being served. The Belmonts had thought they could steamroll over us, treat us like dirt, simply because we didn't fit into their narrow definition of acceptable but they had underestimated the strength of our bond, the unbreakable love that held our little family together. And in the end, it was that love that had triumphed, exposing the ugly truth behind their carefully constructed facade. 
As Haley took my hand and we turned our backs on the Belmonts, I knew that a weight had been lifted, a burden finally shed. The road ahead might not be easy, but at least we would be walking it together, free from the toxic influence of those who had tried so hard to tear us apart. In the weeks and months that followed the disastrous non-wedding, Haley and I slowly but surely began to pick up the pieces of our lives. It wasn't easy, the emotional scars ran deep, and there were moments when I wondered if we would ever truly heal from the Belmont's betrayal. But through it all, we had each other. Our bond forged in the fires of adversity was stronger than ever before. We were a team, united against the world, and nothing could ever tear us apart again. At first, Haley was devastated, her dreams of a fairy tale wedding and happily ever after shattered. She would sit for hours, staring into the distance, her eyes haunted by the memories of that fateful day. How could I have been so blind, she would ask me, her voice thick with tears. How could I have let them manipulate me like that? All I could do was hold her close, whispering soothing words and reminding her that none of this was her fault. The Belmonts were masters of deception, and they had played us all for fools. Slowly, though, the clouds began to part, and Haley's indomitable spirit started to shine through once more. She threw herself into her work, channeling her energy into building a successful career as a marketing executive. And as for me, my little online boutique began to flourish like never before. Word of the Belmont's downfall had spread like wildfire, and suddenly, everyone wanted a piece of the action. Orders poured in from all over the country, and before long I was able to move into a bigger workspace and hire a team of assistants to help keep up with demand. It was a sweet, sweet victory, made all the sweeter by the knowledge that the Belmonts were watching from the sidelines, their once formidable empire crumbling around them. The whispers and rumors had taken on a life of their own, and no amount of damage control could undo the stain on their reputation. Of course, they tried to retaliate, sending scathing letters and even hiring a team of lawyers to threaten legal action. But I was ready for them, armed with a mountain of evidence and a steely resolve that couldn't be broken. In the end, they were forced to slink away, their tails between their legs, banished from the social circles they had once ruled with an iron fist. It was a fitting end to their reign of terror, a reminder that no amount of wealth or status could protect them from the consequences of their actions. As for Haley, she found love again in the most unexpected of places, a charming barista named Alex who worked at her favorite coffee shop. At first, their relationship was tentative, built on the foundation of a shared love of good coffee and bad puns. But as the months wore on, something deeper began to blossom between them. Alex was everything Ethan was not, kind, genuine, and utterly devoted to Haley's happiness. He treated her like a queen, showering her with affection and respect, and slowly but surely the wounds of her past began to heal. And when he finally got down on one knee and proposed, his eyes shining with love and adoration, there was no hesitation in Haley's answer. This time, there would be no grand spectacle, no toxic family drama, just a simple, beautiful ceremony surrounded by the people who truly mattered. As I watched my daughter exchange vows with the man of her dreams, I couldn't help but feel a sense of pride and gratitude. We had been through hell and back, but we had emerged stronger, wiser, and more resilient than ever before. The Belmonts had tried to break us, to crush our spirits and rob us of our dignity. But in the end, they had only succeeded in bringing us closer together, forging an unbreakable bond that would carry us through any storm. And as Haley and Alex danced their first dance as husband and wife, I knew that our journey had come full circle. We had faced the darkness and emerged into the light, ready to embrace the future with open arms and grateful hearts.